At this time, I'd love to bring up uh, Obi, Obi Kaufman. Uh, we can give him a little round of applause. Do you guys remember the show Fishing with John? I want to do hikes with Obi. <laughs> if we can. Okay, so uh, I'm going to hand you this. And if we could bring up Dana, are you, you here bet. still? There he is, Dana Frankoff, uh, director, filmmaker. Hello, hello. Surfer extraordinaire. Okay. And Rachel, are you here? Yeah, bring Rachel up. And Rachel, please help me on your last name. I did not want to butcher it. Okay, What's that? Bajelski. Bajelski? Okay, there it is. A round of applause for uh, Rachel there. Connected off the grid. Um, the film that we just saw, Dana's uh, movie. So uh, since it's fresh in our mind, uh, you don't seem to be a stranger for uh, anything that's hard hitting. I know this was supposed to be a celebration of the river and it turned into more of a um, kind of a siren, an alarm. So kind of take us through the process, what uh, initially turned you on to the, the story and then how alarming it was when you saw <laughs> how great the situation was. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this was a this is only my second film that I've directed and the first one played at Coast Film Festival last year and that story I found. It was like a spark in my brain. And, and then this story really found me. So um, John Manns, who filmed it, was friends with Matt, the long distance swimmer, and was told me they were going on this journey of this big swim that he had never done before, and that they needed somebody to direct and produce the film. And I was like, yeah, you know, I would love to be on this trip. A celebration of the river sounds incredible. And then the American Rivers came in, and um, they're like, you know, if if we're we're gonna, they came on the trip with us, and they're like, if he's gonna do the swim, there's no way that you can avoid talking about the drought. We're at the lowest drought in the history of ever. You know, as Mike Feebig says in the film, like it's never been recorded to be this low. And so we were like, well, this is a great opportunity to bring awareness about the topic, and. Um, I had no idea. Going on this trip, I was like, woohoo, going on a river trip with friends, you know, like this is gonna be great, we're making a movie. And it was sad, it was really hard, and you're looking at this beautiful, triumphant river, and it's just, like he said, four inches deep, and it's shocking, you know? And then um, Matt, who is a long distance swimmer and has never had to get out of the waters, not make a swim, was just so devastated with the fact that, you know, humans can't even do what we've been so used to doing and a resource that we've been so used to having. So it was a moving it was a moving piece for all of us. I mean, we were, American Rivers knows the rivers better than anyone, like the history of the American Rivers. We were there with Pete McBride, who's photographed the Colorado River more than anyone. And um, I think it was a really amazing but kind of sad moment, you know, as you can see from Matt talking at the end. Um, it was a celebration, but it was a celebration of realizing we need to help these rivers. Yeah, it's, um, it's one of those things where sometimes when the message doesn't, you know, it's not so happy, but it brings up the discussion and what uh, all of you do as filmmakers and getting out there and inspiring through books. Um, you don't want to come off as pious. And so that's like the, the next question is, and I'll just open this up to everyone, is yeah, how do you, how do you convey a message that's important in trying to get people connected and engaged without, you know, almost admonishing, if you will. Maybe if you can, because I, 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 I feel diving into your book, I, he, I mean, what Obi does, he does a journal that we all wish we could do in terms of the art and in terms of just, um, like you said, being open to learning as you're going through it. Um, but yeah, so allow, I'll just allow you to Thank you, <laughs> take it off. <laughs> yeah, I've written, for those of you who don't know, I've written, well, I've written four books. My fourth book is coming out this spring, The Coasts of California. But it's the uh, California Field Atlas, the state of water, understanding California's most precious resource, and the forests of California. And so these are several hundred hand-painted maps of how nature works around the state in terms of earth, air, fire, and water. Um, and the forests of California is really about our varied arboreal habitats across the state. And, uh, and I'm going to be offering these books right outside here uh, for a book signing session, so please come up and uh, say hi and, and peruse my books, and they're available for purchase if you would like. And I should say they're very user-friendly. As a you know, native Californian, I <laughs> instantly, by, by page five, I was like, oh, that's what that is, so okay. So, <laughs> uh, I think engaging emotion is good. The first line of my first book is that this is a love story. The first line of my third book is that this is a family album. 
establishing this personal relationship that matures and develops as I learn more about it. It's very interesting watching these movies together and seeing a through line of story and realizing that the, uh, seeing very clearly, in fact, that the, the value of nature decoupled from commodification, whether you're talking about the Tongass rainforest or the Colorado River, uh, when in fact you're, you're actually talking about the same system. And we're seeing this, it's funny, as an ecologist, I am more and more fascinated by the processes of economics. And what we are seeing here at the beginning of the 21st century, as we saw at the beginning of the 20th century, which was the second industrial revolution, or the beginning of the 19th century, which was the first industrial revolution, right? Coal, then oil. Now we're seeing this third industrial revolution uh, that is bringing to bear these market forces that are altering our very idea of what value is and, and where we find it, how we communicate, how we use and find energy, how we get around almost as if that we have the, we have, we have, we have the, the internet of communication, which we've had for now for 20 years. And now the internet of energy, the internet of, of vehicles of trillions of sensors across the planet in agriculture and vehicles and smart machines. We have, we have so many new, we have this new revolution happening right now. And this isn't theoretical. This is happening right now. It's, it's funny to think, and it's important to think, I would say, that you know, to look back where we were 20 years ago and where we are now, I know we have Greta Thunberg in our hearts yelling that we're not doing it fast enough, but I would say the story is changing remarkably fast. We have a plan. California will be carbon neutral in 20 years. You know, we are changing and it's it's not it's not that it's not anything we need to do it's already happening this is this is this is these are market pressures that are already in our daily lives and i think that's very encouraging to 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 realize how far we've come and how fast it's changing you know and how that's, fast we're adapting well that's good to hear i love to hear that optimism I mean, because well, I would say that I would say it's more guarded hope. Than okay, optimism. guarded hope. I mean, because I would say in, in in the midst of so much smartness, there's there's a lot of ignorance, not wanting to see what's right in front of you, and not wanting to see the harbingers of what's clearly happening before our eyes. So, um, although every single one of our our, our uh, environmental types are threatened or endangered, we have a very low extinction rate in the states, less than one percent. That means everything is still here. Don't memorialize nature because it's not dead. It's here, just like our precious native peoples, just like these indigenous sovereignties that are still here and getting into the conversation between scientific innovation and traditional ecological knowledge, listening to the voices of those who have stewarded this landscape for thousands of years, you know? And, that, and, that, and that's very, what a miracle it is in that regard. Well, I mean, I, I think we continually see these stories and we meet these people that are taking, the, you know, their, their stewardship, if you will, their, um, you know, they are conservators in a way. And a lot of the people that we met in your story, Rachel, if I could ask you about what it was like to meet these people that, you know, they're willing to make that tough decision. I mean, I love that we do want to be like Greta, but sadly, I think, you know, I think Kylie Jenner has more followers and gets more likes, <laughs> you know, so we, I, I want to see the shift. But uh, maybe talk about the, the personalities and kind of your uh, your takeaways with getting to know people that were willing to really um, sacrifice so, so much. Yeah. Um, so I I know that those people are out there that are living on the land and with the land and off grid and um, they have so much to tell us. And like Garth, you know, he's somebody that you wouldn't normally go up and meet and find someone to talk to like Garth, but he has all this knowledge, 36 years worth of things to tell us about living in the desert and that you can do it and it can be exciting to live off grid. And so he shows us. Um, and then Stan, the 
tree sitter in the giant redwood tree. He was somebody I'd never thought I'd meet, but I could relate to him 100%. And then here he is, like his whole life, he's like, this is what I'm dedicated to. I'm going to live in this tree now. Um, and then Melanie, just a family that, you know, like my family, we were in this little camper, which was why I was so inspired to make this film, was because my favorite memories as a child was being with my family and getting rid of all the stuff and being in that camper. And so, like, Melanie and Bo, and they're trying to teach their kids, hey, we're going to do that now. We're going to start now, and we're going to sail around the world, and it's going to take some time, but we're going to do it. So they're there. These people are there. We just got to kind of look for them, too. And can I ask you both, too, as filmmakers, now that, you know, you've... Uh, sounds, I mean, it's, it seems that you know, you're rather committed to stories that are not only compelling, but have purpose. So maybe talk about how working on the films, because I know last time you were here uh, with your film about an Indonesian fisherman was really about the environment, but it was wrapped around this love story. So maybe talk about the process of getting behind stories that are compelling, but have purpose. Yeah. Yeah, I think it starts from deep within us. Like we have to really care. And I think, yeah, we're not going to get out there if we don't care about, okay, well, how, how do we get rid of all of the stuff? That was my thing. It was like, okay, we're so consumed with being on social media and I want to get out there more. So it was, you know, taking that first step and living on a boat myself. Um, so I think starting from deep within us um, really gets those, those feelings out there to share those stories. Yeah, I agree completely. Um, as a filmmaker, I like to focus on a personal story and really bring out the vulnerability of that person that you can relate to. So if it's living off the grid or picking up trash in your boat every day or, you know, deciding that you're going to do a 52-mile swim just to, you know, because and you love the river that much and bring awareness, it's that, like, a little bit of crazy human vulnerability that we can all sit in a theater in any other part of the world and relate to. And I think that's the spark that will hit inside of us and be like, wait, I care about that too. Because there's a lot that you can do, right? You could list out the things. And when I started doing Q&As, I was like, how do all these lists of things that you could do to not use plastic for my previous film? And then I was like, you know what's really important, though, is like getting people to reconnect with water and like the river, the ocean, the nature, trees. And by doing that, that is going to create the snowball effect of wanting to help it um, in getting outside into it. And you were echoing those same sentiments in the film we watched with you is, you know, once the accessibility is there and once, once people make that connection, right, that really is the, the ultimate kind of catalyst to get people to care. Well, with a, along with economic paradigm shifts come consciousness paradigm shifts. You know, in the 19th century, we saw what's called the ideological paradigm. In the 20th century, we had the psychological paradigm. In the 21st century, what we are witnessing and what we're seeing here today, forever changed, we all are by these films today, is biospheric consciousness. And this sharing economy that's happening. In, in fact, I mean, talk about things that wouldn't have happened 20 years ago. Film festivals. Why we're all here today. Like this, this, this. The importance of this story is is greater than the sum of its parts, and it's one story being told, which is interesting. Which is part of this emergence, and it's already here. Now, now we now we just need to give ourselves time. Time is a, a hope is a function of time. Uh, as long as there is time, there is hope. And to take it easy on ourselves. I have so many friends, so many activist friends who are killing themselves with anxiety. And like every day they wear themselves down. First, take care of you. You know, keep you all sustainability starts with your own practice. I say that again and again. Well, I thought you were going to go into uh, string theory there for a second with oh, time. Ready, you want to talk about? No, no, no we, we'll, we'll, reality, we'll get into I'm a wormhole because okay. <laughs> I, I love that stuff. I do want. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention. Uh, I heard this, and I if, tell me if it's true. But with the book tour, are you walking everywhere? Is that is, right? To, well, when the books are done, okay. So okay. I am like a backpacker. That's like this is a, these books come from a real pedestrian. 
ethic, right? The story of the trail, you know, walking the, that roads don't give you. You don't see California at 55 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour, or however fast you go. Um, six books when it's all done. I've got uh, The Field Atlas, Water, Forests, Coasts, Deserts, and the last one will be The State of Fire. So I'm writing the big Game of Thrones of California nature, you know, and these books keep getting yeah. bigger. Um, uh, when that's all done, I'm going to do a year-long walking tour of California and just, you know, because I got to get outside. I think these, these books are, these books kill me <laughs> in the best way. <laughs> yeah, no. I, if I could be on the short list, I'd love to do at least one part of the leg with oh, you. Oh, Pat, you're in. You're I just watched up. that film and it's, I just love when I'm with people where they break, oh, that, that acorn and they know the history of <laughs> little things that you just walk by and you step Natural over history. on the trail. Once you make that connection, you realize the importance of that tree or learning about aspens or cryptosporidium, whether you're, if you're in Utah, like the interconnectivity is really what opens it up, but uh, I won't digress with that. I do want to just, uh, before we go, because I know we're, we're running late with, um, we have to wrap it up and get ready for the next film block and do a quick step down. But if um, I could ask uh, filmmakers, uh, Rachel, what's um, after, with this film, are you <laughs> inspired to go out there and get after more more story? Yeah, so yeah. Um, I'm also a photographer. Yeah. So I'm doing a big story on the housing crisis. So my off-grid work is kind of going into the housing crisis and all the aftermath of the fires and documenting that and writing a National Geographic grant. So lots more to come. All right, we look forward to that. Thank and you. Dana, I know you're uh, you're quite the Rolling Stone, so uh, <laughs> bring us up to speed. I appreciate it. I've never been called that, but I appreciate it yeah. a lot. Um, I'm doing a local film, actually, about the Ecology Center. For those of you who are familiar, it's a sustainable yeah. farm. Um, if you were here at the beginning, Adelia, who got up and did the prayer for us, um, she's in it, and she does an amazing interview where we're all crying at the end. But, um, so that's a project under works. And then um, another big passion project I have right now is, gonna, is called Gardeners of the Sea, and it's also in post-production. And it's about women ocean farmers in Hawaii who are using sea plants as a resource uh, that like their ancestors did, and they're bringing it back. Because the value of sea plants is tremendous for reversing climate change, nutritional value. If we can use more of the resources that are underwater than using land-based farming, it could just save all that as well. So I'm really excited about that one. Let, me, let me know if you need a PA on that one. I um, do. Okay. <laughs> Pat, you're in. OK. Yeah. And uh, lastly, it sounds like you, well, you basically gave us what's, uh, what's next uh, with, with the book series. But um, following the film festival, where are you, where are you off to? Uh, well, um, yeah, I, I, I do a lot of touring and speaking. Please follow me on the Instagram. My handle is Coyote Thunder to find out where I am. I'm going up to the Mendocino Coast tomorrow to, to uh, do some talking to, uh, uh, to the uh, forest conservators up there. And uh, but then it's back to the office to get to work on the next book. So the coast is coming out in April, so I'll be touring again, and I hope to all see you down here in the springtime for that book. Let's get him trending, you guys. What do you say? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How about a round of applause for filmmakers, artists, storytellers? Um, so we're going to do a quick stop down, I believe, for about. I know we had a little bit, a uh, little bit of a block. Allow people to grab a grab a snack and some coffee, and then we will re rack it for our next block. A whole nother round of really uh, inspirational stories to about wanderlust. So you don't want to miss that. So thank you, you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you.